Nelson Lupus Profundus, an Indian perspective. This is the first case series I am presenting from India, and Lupus Profundus. And this study was to give highlights about the clinical histopathological presentation and its differences, and compared with the Western literature. Lupus profundus, as we know, is a rare subset of lupus eridomatosus, and it is predominantly involved subcutaneous tissue. Kaposi, Kaposi was the first person to describe this condition in 1883, and incidence is usually one to three percent of total lupus eridomatous cases. Female are more commonly affected. Presentation can be panniculitis only, or can be associated with DLE or SLE. This study was a retrospective study, and all the histopathological proven cases of uh, lupus profundis is taken into the study. And this is a uh, clinical records taken from 1996 to 2010, including little history, clinical examination, uh, laboratory workup, DIF study, and all. There were total 11 patients, and mean ease of presentation was 26 years. Male to female ratio was 3 is to 8. And the distribution of the lesion, that is the site of presentation, more commonly was in face, that was 64%, followed by extremities and scalp. This is a clinic presentation comparison with the Western literature, gender. It is more commonly affected in females, as well as in our scenario, we also got the same thing. Is a presentation mainly in the elderly and middle-aged women as seen in the Western literature, but in our scenario we have found mainly in the younger age group. Side common presentation is the proximal extremities, trunk and the buttocks, but in inner scenario we have seen face involvement. This is some of the pictures commonly seen in uh, people. You can this is subcutaneous indurated plaques on the proximal extremities, mainly the arm of a gentleman. The similar type of presentation in the female, and presentation of ulcer also in the buttocks in a gentleman. These are other presentation of erythematous indurated plaques on the extremities, even in ulcer presentation. This is one of my pre patient presented with indurated plaques with pigmentation on the right cheek. Another case of lupus profundus showing atrophy. Another case showing chronic ulcer with involving indurated irrenovitis plaque. Another patient showing morphia-like features in the forehead. This another patient showing having this chronic ulcers where a diagnosis could have made early could prevent this, uh, this type of sequelae. This is another gentleman having this indurated plaque with pigmentation with DLA features over here, like scalings and all in the left cheek. This is another boy presented with classic presentation of SLE with the butterfly type of breast who had lupus profundus of the scalp. These are the other pictures I have taken from the South Asian reports, which is usually presentation as a trophy and the plaque on the face. There can be also unusual presentation, can be involving breast, parotid gland, and periocular tissue. Association with SL. In our series, we have got 10% association. In literature review, similar incidence of smaller incidence from 10 to 30% is also there. And even presentation of higher incidence, that is 56 to 83% has also been seen. And we all know this lupus profundus usually may proceed DLE or SLE by several years. And progression of this lupus profundus to SLE is very known in 10 to 50% of the patients. And view of early onset in our case series is Indian population at the increased risk of developing SLE. The most diagnostic features of lupus profundus is the histopathological examination. And these are the listed key histological features in lupus profundus having lobular inflammation, lymphohistocytes with plasma cells, fat necrosis with hyalinization, fibrinoid necrosis, lymphoid follicles, which is suggestive but not diagnostic because it has been also found in other diseases like erythema nodosum, morphia, etc. And in this particular thing, I would just like to discuss 
uh, another condition which can clinically mimic lupus profundus, that is subcutaneous P cell lymphoma. And this is usually di diagnosed by mainly histopathological features, having atypical beta uh, CD8 T lymphocytes. Secondly, absence of septal panniculitis, absence of plasma cell and beta cell follicles give clue to this diagnosis. In our series, we have seen lo uh, lobular panniculitis, highland fat necrosis, and inflammatory infiltrate in all the patient that is 100%. Inflammatory uh, infiltrate mainly predominantly involvement of lymphocytes and histocytes and plasma cells, followed by neutrophils and eosinophils. Dermal mucin was found in 45% and interface pathology was uh, found in 55%. This is a histopathological slide showing inflammation mainly in the deep dermal and subcutaneous level. This is another picture showing uh, interface pathology. This is the vascular degeneration you can see in the basement membrane zone. This is the homogenization of the basement membrane zone, telangiectasia, perivascular inflammatory infiltrate, which is extending to the subcutaneous level. Another slide in high power, um, power showing this hyalinization with inflammatory infiltrate. This again in high power showing uh, inflammatory infiltrate consisting of lymphocytes and hyalinization. This is a wonderful rimming of the adipocytes by the lymphocytes. Another slide showing hyalinization and uh, lymphocytes with plasma cells. This you can see lymphocytes and blood muscles over here. And direct immunofluorescence, which is quite important diagnostic tool, which was done in three out of total 11 patients. And the lupus band was positive in all the three patients. And deposition was pre, uh, predominantly IgG followed by IgM, IgMC3. There was an interesting finding that out of total three cases, two had no interface pathology, which gives Direct immunofluorescence is an important diagnostic tool for diagnosis lupus profundus. Uh, there are similar studies in the literature of lower incidence of 36 percent with higher incidence of 70 percent also in the literature. This is one of our patients showing uh, uh, this immunofluorescence band in the dermoepidermal junction of uh, IgM. Now coming to treatment. Treatment strategies for this lipos profund is very difficult because the low prevalence of the disease and also the relapsing and recurrent type of the disease. Steroids, topical steroids can be used that is mainly a high potent steroid as a clopidogrel, propionate 0.05% ointment in occlusion, but there are very less reports of effectiveness if is used in alone. An oral steroid should be avoided in this case unless it is associated with SLE. Antimorelials are the first line of treatment of this disorder. Hydroxychloroquine is used uh, in this uh, disease, mainly in the dose of less than 6.5 milligram per kg per day. And it is not improved with this one. Quinacrine can be used along with this, with 100 milligram per day. And now next is the immunomodulators, which can be used in these conditions are thalidomide and dapsone. If the patient having no improvement with antimorelates or having the side effects of that, immunosuppressives like azathioprine, methotrexate, cyclophosphamide can also be used. But if this is a case, patient is having SLE, then it is only um, valuable, otherwise it's not. Intravenous immunoglobin has also been used in the patient of LP with SLE. And uh, rituximab is a biological which has also been used. And in the case report, it has been said that after two infusion, it has been uh, improvement with the patients, both clinical and uh, systemic improvement. We are having this patient with SLSE. And uh, we know that there is a chronic atrophy of this uh, uh, atrophy in this uh, lupus profundus. So there are uh, multiple therapies which has been used as autologous uh, fat transfer, dermophilus for atrophy. 
so I conclude my study by saying that this is the first series from uh, India and younger age group are mostly affected. More commonly is found in females. Facial involvement is the most common. Diagnosis by histopathological examination and with diff study. An early diagnosis and therapeutic intervention may prevent disfiguring sequelae and reduce risk of systemic disease. Thank you very much. I expect any questions, please. Yes, ma'am. not done in my patient. He says I am just giving a review. In this type of patients, we can use that. Yeah, we can use that. 